I'm okay with hunting for the most part, if it's done in a sustainable way. Are there any industries where you pay for people to be violent towards animals? Do you consume meat, dairy, eggs, and fish? Wear leather, visit zoos and aquariums, uh, buy products that are tested on animals, that kind of thing? Unfortunately, uh, yes to pretty much all of that, yeah. When I was growing up, I lived on a, a small farm and we had a, a cow for dairy. I, I feel like I can taste it, like the, the trauma that the animals go through, I feel like that is somehow internalized when you eat that, that, that animal. Definitely grows the conflict that I feel about partaking in ingesting products made by this industry, yeah. Yeah. Hi everyone, this is Sheena and I'm in Squamish today in British Columbia on the west coast of Canada and I walked past Simon and asked him if he wanted to talk about animals, if he was an animal lover and he kindly agreed to sit down. How are you? Good. Good. So are you an animal lover? I sure am. What is it about animals that you like? Well, we are all animals. So yeah, it's just lovely to see the diversity and uh, interesting to see how we can live in harmony with all the other uh, animals that are in our ecosystems. Yeah, I'm so glad you say that. I couldn't agree more. We are all animals. Sometimes people forget that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you think about violence towards animals or people that are violent towards animals? Yeah, uh, well, don't like it. Um, I mean, it, it is natural for our species uh, to be predators in some ways, but uh, the way we are set up now, uh, it is definitely not necessary to kill without purpose. Uh, which happens a lot. Um, I'm, a, I'm okay with hunting for the most part, if it's done in a sustainable way, hunting and fishing. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the times um, it is not done out of necessity for food or any other materials that the animals have to offer. Uh, and that is very sad. Yeah, I, I agree with most of what you said there. Um, okay, the last question. It's a little bit trickier, and I'm not judging you here. I contributed to it for a really long time as well, most of my life. Are there any industries where you pay for people to be violent towards animals? Do you consume meat, dairy, eggs, and fish? Wear leather, visit zoos and aquariums, uh, buy products that are tested on animals, that kind of thing? Unfortunately, uh, yes to pretty much all of that, yeah. Um, yeah, at some point, uh, or I guess there's never a better time to start, but, uh, yeah. so do you think animals in the meat, let's, let's stick with the meat, dairy and egg in, and fish in, fishing industry. Do you think those, an, those industries are inherently violent? Um, the, I don't know if I would use the word violent, but maybe non-cognizant of the, uh, of the lives of the animals, like just that these animals have feelings and like the overcrowdedness of a lot of the, um, homes of these animals and stuff like that. Um, yes, very inhumane uh, processes often are used. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think when we think about it, sometimes we just don't even think about it, do we? What the animals go through to become in that package or on our plate. I think a lot of times we tell ourselves, it wasn't so bad, it wasn't so bad for this animal. Yeah. Would you say that's true? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And you know, most of our meat, a dairy and egg products here come from factory farms come from mass production. Even here, say we have a butcher just down the road. They all go to the same slaughterhouse. They're all killed when they're babies. Um, what animals do you eat the most? 
Um, probably, I'd say cows, yeah. And how about milk and cheese and eggs and things like that? Uh, yeah, I, I don't drink as much milk anymore. Mostly oat milk now. Definitely. Why is that? Uh, just, I don't know. Uh, it sits with me a bit better. The dairy isn't quite as nice on my stomach these days. Uh, yeah, uh, well, when I was growing up, I lived on a, a small farm and we had a, a cow for dairy and just the, the difference in, in dairy from a cow that is just, just on pasture and treated so nicely and milked every morning uh, by your own hands is uh, incredibly different and you feel so much better about that. Uh, same with the meat that comes from that. It's just, I, I feel like I can taste it. Like the, the trauma that the animals go through, I feel like that is somehow internalized when you eat that, that, that animal. Do you think even when we have like a backyard hen or a cow that we milk at home, if we want to grant animals full autonomy and, you know, rights to their own body and what their body produces, do you think we should give them that? Good. Yeah, uh, that, that would be ideal, yeah. Can I show you a quick video on the dairy industry, what, how it's produced in the mainstream? How did that video make you feel? Very sad. Yeah, definitely grows the conflict that I feel about partaking in ingesting products made by this industry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the reaction that you have, most people would have when they're confronted by it, but it's kept so hidden from us. What do you think we can do about it? It comes to me like how, I mean, it's a different, sort of different but like you know on like cigarette packages there's pictures of like people in very dire situations because of what that can do like just having th these gruesome things on dairy products they would definitely not sell quite as well <laughs> but yeah they absolutely don't want you to know and i don't know if you've noticed in canada now on the labels of uh, the packaging of chicken eggs They'll put pictures of the farmers, happy family farmers, instead to sell us the product. They would never show you this or pictures of the baby cow being taken away from their mother or whatever it is. They'll put a picture that they want you to see. It's all marketing, even the terms, the local, the humane. So when I was saying, what do you think you can do about it? The industry is based on supply and demand. Have you noticed a lot more like vegan products available in the grocery stores and restaurants and things? Mm -hmm. So that's because it's all supply and demand. So the more we demand these products, the more they're going to supply them. Yeah. You know, we do a lot of work, um, you know, trying to make institutional changes like, you know, lobbying the government to, to transition subsidies away from animal farming to plant farming, things like that. But the individual has so much power in the purchases that they make. What would hold you back from being vegan? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just a, a big transition to make. It's finding out how to get the same nutrition that I get without using those products definitely would take a lot of figuring out. Uh, and I, I can give you definitely some resources that could help you. Um, it's so easy, you know, anything that you would look up online now for a recipe, you just type in vegan before it and so much comes up and I've got a lot of other resources I can give you. Yeah. In the beginning of the conversation, you said that, you know, unnecessary violence towards animals is wrong if it's not for a good reason. Do you think we need to eat animals to be healthy or survive? But, uh... 
I don't think we need to eat them to sur survive. That's that's definitely not true. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's hard to say. There's definitely a lot of top athletes that have been vegan and are still performing very well. Uh, like. I, I definitely you do, do you have energy after I eat a big meat meal or something like that. Like, I, I can't deny that, but at the same time, yeah, I mean, it's... Probably... How does it compare to if you've eat, eaten a big vegan meal with all the different nutrients and, and vitamins in it? Does it compare or have you tried it? I, it definitely doesn't happen as often, like, just... No, yeah, I, I have eaten a fair amount of good filling meals like that and yeah, yeah it's just it, it definitely is a bit more work and uh maybe maybe not even but <laughs> right so yeah so i ask you like for that to remember those times as well right and even if it is slightly more of an effort do you think that slight effort is worth the life of an animal definitely yeah and um, i want to go back to one more thing that you said earlier that you think hunting fishing um those things are okay um, because it's, I think you said, taking what you need. Is that, is that truly how you feel? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, if, it's I, not, if it's not necessary for health or survival, does that still make hunting and fishing okay? I don't think that it is uh, sustainable uh, for every single person uh, that lives in a city to be going out and hunting. Like, it's, it's just not possible. But uh, many indigenous cultures rely heavily on it. In no way I do, do I think that they should all go vegan. Uh, the, I think that it is okay for some some people to do that. Uh, Absolutely, you know, advocating here um, in the town of Squamish to people that don't depend on it for survival. Um, I do think it can be justified when it's a matter of survival. I still don't think it makes it ethical or moral but it can be justified when it's a matter of survival. If it's just about it being a cultural thing, but people have access to other foods, like eating animals is part of most cultures, not just First Nations Canadians or indigenous people around the world, right? But when we have access to other foods, it does become a choice. And because something is cultural, there's a lot of cultural practices all around the world, right? One of them, for example, let's say, female genital mutilation is a cultural practice, but not necessarily moral, simply because it's a cultural practice. Do you think something should be considered okay and moral simply because it's a cultural practice when we have access to other foods? Um, I, I don't necessarily know if it would make it moral, uh, but I would say like, if you have the option uh maybe like 90 percent of the time you do uh make that choice to not um now it's really hard to say this because I, I have never put this in practice but like yeah you know and but why do you say 90 percent of the time why not for those people that have access a hundred percent of the time because to the animal that's being killed 10 percent of the time it's their one and only life true and how about for us for you what would be kind of holding you back from doing it 100% of the time? Uh, is this something you'd like to learn more about and perhaps try? Absolutely, I would like to try. Uh, definitely, yeah. I, I've i considered many times being like, okay, I'm only gonna take, eat like things that are uh, raised in a more a sustainable way or something but in the end it's still killing an animal and like yeah still can like killing an animal at a fraction of their lifespan these terms the local humane all that those are just marketing terms to make us feel better do you have any questions for me I i'm definitely interested to see some of your resources about vegan eating and stuff like that, uh, to learn a bit more about that and Excellent. I have some of that impro into use. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I've got lots of information to give you. I can even write some stuff down for you. It was so nice talking to you. Just know until the day it is that you go vegan, animals will continue to be treated with violence and be killed because of your purchases.
All right. Thanks very much. Nice to meet you.